What's up, dead vlog families? What's up, everybody who's dead? Uh, shout out to all my dead people watching this. You know, I gotta shout you out first, you feel me? From the afterlife watching me on dead YouTube. I'm in Baltimore right now. See that beautiful statue? That beautiful statue. So, um, we just got here uh, in my garage. Why is it so dark? Oh, there you go, much better, much better. Um, I gotta wait to get to this Airbnb. We gotta walk around, we gotta kill some time to get to this Airbnb. So, so I'm gonna give you guys a review of this. Uh, so we got this guy who just, who just beat his meat, and he's, he's, he's tired. This woman is dead after drinking too much tequila. So we're in the beautiful Lexington Market. I just stumbled across a holy, cursed creature made to stand guard over the throngs of people buying, uh, buying weird foods and whatnot. He's sitting there with his, his crooked smile, staring out at the world, staring out and wondering when his, when his, uh, his reign over the shea butter empire will end. The Lord, the soldier of shea butter. Yeah, it's your boy. It's your boy. It's a beautiful day out. A nice train going by. Uh, Beach House Show is in how many hours? It's 10 26 right now. Beach House Show is at 8 p.m. There's a lot of beautiful street art in Baltimore as well. Beautiful street art, beautiful uh, structures, uh, beautiful. It just feels like the city culture is a lot different from where I'm from. And I'm very, um, I'm very seduced by this place. I'm very interested in seduced. It's seducing it. The city is kissing and licking my ear. Right there is Maryland Institute College of Art, where I was fantasizing about going for a really long time. I really like this little turret here. I was fantasizing about going to this school for a really long time. Tuition is really dumb expensive. It's dumb expensive, so uh, I ended up going to UMD instead. So good, but I don't think I can get a good image of it. I'm gonna try anyway. It looks much better in real life. I feel like the the paintings here have a different quality to them. Like they're, um, I don't know. Like message-wise, I feel like they're different. I feel like they're trying to. Again, like I feel like everything is political. The DC public art. I think the stuff that gets blown up is well. No, it's, it's not. It's not all political. Maybe it's my. I, I don't know, maybe it's my vibe. I feel like you, you wouldn't see these. So, the Beach House show. That footage you were just looking at was me wandering around some of the streets of Baltimore, which is not really a place I felt comfortable just taking my phone out and looking like a dumb tourist. It's like, okay, you know, this is, this is a good time for me to just, uh, you know, experience, experience the world. Um, you saw some of the brilliant architecture, the beautiful, ancient architecture of that place. And maybe somehow some of this stuff is embedded in Beach House's music. You know, in an ideal world, you could sort of trace these environments right back to the stuff that we're making. And at best, that's a true thing. It's a very true thing that wherever we are really does influence what kind of things we create. And this is relevant to Beach House because where they're from is a huge point of their creative process and who they are. And you'll see this come up over and over again in interviews and whenever they have any moment to talk about anything, like they always bring it back to Baltimore somehow. In this show at the Hippodrome Theater, 
And this is, by the way, their return to Baltimore. Apparently, they haven't played a club or a theater venue in Baltimore in like six years, which is insanity because they're from there. Play more often in this area, especially DC Beach House. What the fuck? Come on, Vic. I love you, but come on. Um, the Hippodrome Theater. First act, I only got to catch the, I guess, last uh, three quarters of this. Highly regret it because, I mean, William Cashin from Future Islands was playing this thing, I guess they call them musical postcards, where he was just sitting there playing loops, no visuals, just doing bass and had these uh, synths, and he was just doing bass loops. These bass loops and playing with these motifs, and it wasn't improv, like he, he clearly had these songs in mind, but it was sort of like, it felt like remembrance. I think the postcard motif is like a really good way to a uh, really good thing to title these pieces because it sounded like that. It sounded like you were going back into something similar to childhood. And the only way I could describe it was like, it felt like some of the best synthy portions of the music that I like from places like bands like Future Islands, Beach House, Dan Deacon, just being kind of like grinded down and warped. Like he's just like really examining it, sometimes it was just like four notes that he would just keep playing over and over again. I loved it, loved it. Wish I could have seen more of it. I hope, I really hope William Cashin records these things because awesome. Dan Deacon, come on, you know this guy's nuts. You know Dan Deacon, Gliss Riffer, Bromst, America. He announced during his set that he's coming out with a new album. And maybe it's the first time he announced it. I don't know. But Dan Deacon, played a few good, good songs like uh, When I Was Done Dying, this other one called, um, it starts with an S, I forgot, it was from Bronx, and you know, he always has the some audience participation moment where he's like, close your eyes and think of this. If it's in a, a large venue where people can dance, you'll have like these weird dance-offs and stuff, but um, some pretty emotional stuff where he was talking about what it feels like to be emotionally overwhelmed and how you can just dive into these feelings instead of running away from it. That was very touching, which, Victoria, by the way, later on in the show was like, oh, Dan Deacon fucked me up from saying that. Just uh, all the emotional stuff. That was kind of a cool moment, too. And Beach House came out very soon after Dan Deacon went off. And they opened with Levitation. I think they usually open with Levitation. And it was pretty much, as I suspected, what I wanted. A lot of Depression Cherry, a lot of Seven, a lot of Bloom. Somehow, like... I four or five teen dream tracks. There was only one track I didn't know that they played from Beach House. I don't even think it was Devotion. I think it was Beach House. Um, are those the same album? It's a different album, right? And it was a song that they, that was taken from their set list crea creator. Uh, that was the only song I didn't know that they played. But other, other than that, all the hits, Master of None, PPP, come on, come on. Space Song, Wishes, all the, all the shit you want to hear. Uh, dive, myth, did I say myth already? Um, there were some sound issues, but I honestly, at this point, I, felt, I feel about sound issues in a live Beach House show the way I did when I saw that happen with Radiohead Live. When, when I saw Radiohead Live at the Verizon Center a couple years ago, um, they fucked up while they were playing like Bloom or something, and we all started screaming because it was like, Maybe it's like seeing Zeus about to throw a lightning bolt and he goes, oh shit, and it just it goes zoom the other way. We're like, oh fuck. Because I mean, like, come on, it, it's, it's Beach House. Like, I, I don't care what it is. Like, there, were, there was a moment, I think, when Alex's guitar was like, and it, you know what it was? PPP solo. The PPP solo, when he was getting into it, like, it was, it was off and you couldn't hear it. Of course, like, Victoria and the, drum and the, the drummer were enough to carry that. Um, had a couple transcendent moments, a couple transcendent moments where I'm like, I am here right now, I am present in this place, experiencing this thing I've been looking so forward to. Uh, and it was just a beautiful day. I got to go to Micah, got to see Beach House, got to see them weave in and out of these songs. Beautiful different visuals for this. And they seem to change the visuals, but well, they don't seem to, they definitely change the visuals every tour. For this one, Specifically, what I liked was seeing this blowing up of Victoria 
especially, and they, they would, they had some kind of camera that would project them and just be like layering them live. So you would just see her where, and she was super energetic this show. Usually you only see her like, um, you only see her doing like the, the hair twirling during something like Lemon Glow or Dive, but she was doing it a hell of a lot during the show. Highly energetic. And um, you could see it displayed many times at duplication behind them. Fucking amazing. Turns out this was their 904th show. And like they they stopped the sh they didn't stop the show. At some point, it was like during an interlude, and they were just talking to each other, like, "Wait, which one is this?" Nine hundred and four is a fucking lot, and uh, it's kind of historical for them because they were talking about once again what it's like for them to be in this area and to keep coming back. Dan Deacon was like, he really appreciated that they they haven't left this place when they could have been in L.A. or. New York or Tokyo, some fucking where, but they've chosen to stay here, and I'm glad they've chosen to stay in this area, because maybe one day I'll be able to see Victoria while I'm sitting on a bus somewhere, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, I'll just bang on the glass, hey, I'll be like Clive Owen and Children of Men. That's the that's the first bus scene I can think of. <laughs> the jacket, ah, Victoria. What else do I have to say about the Beach House show? Put your phones away, people. Come on. I'll give you one. But like, these two ladies standing next to me had their phones out, and they were like, excuse me, they were recording, and they were texting and sending emojis to their friends. And I don't, it was in Chinese, so I have no fucking idea what it could have been. Sending pictures of squirrels to their friends and shit. I'm like, wait, what could it pop? This is a sold out show. It could have been some important stuff that you just, you just could pick up on. Our operatives are in the Kremlin, ready to go right now. This is the one place we can, the Beach House show is the one place we can go and we won't be tracked down. And maybe there's some operatives that Victoria set up to, to do some, some secret KGB shit. Who knows? Yeah, maybe you're right. Uh, closing thoughts on Beach House. Um, this is like my fifth time seeing them. There will be more times. If I were filthy fucking rich, I'd be like one of those Grateful Dead fans where I would be like, oh, they're going on a world tour? I'm going to half of those places. Fuck it. I'm gonna be in Iceland, I'm gonna be in Turkey, I'm gonna be on fucking Mars, be on the moon, fucking Pluto, hanging on for dear life while they're playing. Oh my God, play PPP one more time. Holy shit. Ah. Um, what else, what else do I have to say? This band is becoming more and more like, I, I'm, I'm convinced that this is vampire music and they're becoming more and more dark and beautiful as time goes on. Like you can't, you can't see their faces. And this is deliberate, like these are art school kids. Like they're just black shadows against the colors. And just look up any of the, the live, live footage you can of their shows and you'll see what I'm talking about. Obscured by the light coming from behind and I like it, I like it a lot. Thank you Beach House and thank you for watching this video. Let me know if you happen to be at this show or at any other Beach House show, your thoughts on this, uh, your thoughts on the show, your favorite songs that they played. Let me know. I want to know. We want to know. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. See you later.